Ray. And I'm Veronica. And welcome to the Chicklet Book Club Podcast. Where we read a romance novel and then we talk about it. Today, we're talking about American Queen by Sierra Simone. Huh. Oh. <laughs> I'm fanning myself like a I'm already lady. hot as fuck. Oh, Jesus. It's hot under the collar. <laughs> I'm rude. <laughs> I'm, I'm Blanche Devereauxing over here. What? Love you. Okay, so you have something to say. Do you have something to say? I always have something to say. Oh, have you I know met me? I do. What? Okay. So uh, today we have a guest. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she is a friend of mine who apparently, as she has just informed me, uh, I've known for 18 fucking years, which, dear listener, is half of my goddamn life. <laughs> so um, everyone, please welcome my dear friend, Sunny. As, as those in the South will say, like, dear Lord. <laughs> yes. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> um, Sunny and I literally shared a wall in college. I thought you were going to say a womb. <laughs> uh, Veronica decided she was going to be my friend. I <laughs> decided. She decided. Yep. Yep. That's that's kind of what happened. No, it's definitely what happened. <laughs> it's definitely what happened. I remember trying to talk to you at orientation and you were just like, I am too busy to be here. <laughs> yeah, not. I was like, oh, she decided we're going to be friends, so I can't be too busy. <laughs> no, and then also, like, at the time, we didn't know that you were literally on the other side of the wall from me. So then you could not escape me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. Here we are 18 years later. Happens, man. Yep. New Orleans and you're where you are. So that's yep. important. I'm, I live outside of the French Quarter. Um, Veronica and I met in Cincinnati and I moved to New Orleans seven years ago. So hear me talk a little bit of Southern and a lot of bit of gay Southern. That's where I'm at in my life. I like both of those things. <laughs> so, Sunny, tell me, tell us a little bit about like what you usually read. Uh, it's tragically so not close to what I read with y'all. I was going to say, yes. I am going to teach college in the fall. I actually read an intense amount of nonfiction, intense amount of like very heavy reading. And so... I hate, I hate to be the cliche, long time listener, first time calling in, um, here I am. I loved how y'all describe these novels. And so it was like, please, please, Veronica, let me get in on it. And when I did, I was like, oh, well, that makes so much sense. Like I read, read 300 and American Queen is 380 pages. So I read it in three days. Mm-hmm. It was so, a fast read, I have to say. I'm not, I mean, well, spoiler alert! It was it was it was a quick read. Yeah, yeah. The fast read with the good vibration setting. <laughs> nice, crushed my own heart, man. Nice, Bye. nice. <sighs> so we're really lucky to have Sunny. I'm super we excited are. that she's here. Um, shall we maybe talk about some positive things? Oh my God. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, Sunny, do you want to go first? Do you want to tell us what your bright spot is? My bright spot is I am on my third career of my life. I, I worked in radio promotions and marketing. I worked in luxury hospitality and now I'm going into collegiate academics. So that's really exciting for me. And also fucking terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But you know, I'm excited for you. I'm like, yeah, it's going to be excited. awesome. You're going to be good at that. Because I'm a nerd. Yes, correct. Well, yes, but <laughs> no, like but still, you are like, just dedicated to everything that you do. And so it's going to be great. Your personality seems like it would be great for the classroom. The kids are going to uh, love you. I'm, I'm going to really enjoy, like, please tell me that you're going to at least use some of your low level snark. Oh, for reals, right? Oh, it's already done. I'm already, <laughs> I'm already pissed off. I read it. One of the parts of my textbook, I'm teaching marketing for anybody interested. Um, and it was like, oh, subcultures, like the Asian American, the Hispanic American, and the Black American. And it was like, wow, could you be more racist with this chapter? No, thank you. 
Yeah, it's different now, isn't it? This book was not written that long ago. Oh, Jesus. Oh. It's like those textbooks they find in the libraries from like 1950. They're like, ah, the things that are said in there, Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's happy with you? <laughs> Ray, what's up? Uh, you know, actually, I would love to hear what your bright spot is. Tell me something good. Oh, my God. Okay, so uh, my kid is now at the age where she is like, she has been alive for the Winter Olympics, but this is the first Summer Olympics oh, shit, that, that she's... Starts, that's tonight, isn't it? That starts oh, tonight. Okay, okay, yeah. So um, they, this is the first one that she's like old enough for to kind of like get mm-hmm. what we're watching, right? So tonight, I really wanted to watch the opening ceremony, at least for a little bit before she went to bed. But I also knew that like she probably wasn't going to sit through that. Yeah. So my husband found like men's gymnastic trials. Hello. Girlfriend was all about that shit. She, again, girl off my own heart. Or, right? Right? Yep. Uh, it took literally one floor routine for her to be going, he stuck the landing. Like she <laughs> <laughs> She was so fucking on top of it. Totally ready. She kept going, that was amazing. And then she would go, can you do that? And I was just like, no, babe. No, <laughs> there is no you, fucking way. Your answer should be, yes, I can. <laughs> we have, we have in our family have gone and, and milked this certain thing my mom has said for years. If you've ever, anybody's ever seen White Christmas in the whole um, Mandy you know, Mandy, there's a minister handy. This guy runs, he dances up the stairs backwards. My mom oh, just turns to me and she goes, she goes, I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so that we have milked that for years. So you should do that. Next I can do that. Yeah, exactly. Because it'll be chef's kiss. Oh, my God. So that's my bright spot. It was watching the fucking Olympics with her. She also said something. Um, she was making some noise tonight. And I thought she was talking about the Olympics at that time. She was like, can you do that? And I was like, no, babe, I cannot. And she goes, no, this noise. Can you do this noise? And she was some (laughs) fucking noise she was making. And I was like, I don't even know how you're making that noise. And she goes, she goes, because sound is language. And this language is my own. (laughs) Um, But yeah, that's it. Hey, Ray. Yeah. Tell me something good. Holy God. I'm getting a dog. Getting yes. A, I'm getting a puppy tomorrow, guys. Ugh, so, I'm still a little salty. You're not bringing the puppy to my house. I know. I'm so sorry, guys. Like, I'm so sorry. Um, So it was like, I, I had been looking on this website. Keep refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. And there was another puppy I was going to get. It was going to take me seven hours to go and get this puppy. Nope. And then this other puppy came up and it was two hours away. And I said, fuck that other puppy. Not really, but kind of. And this puppy looks like Luna. So Bucky, Bucky Bars is coming tomorrow. Hell yeah. Bucky Bars is coming to my house. What? Super um, jealous. So, so tonight I definitely went and got a, a carrier to bring him home. And the smallest um, little um, harness for him because he's going to be tiny. And... um yeah so i'm excited about it and i got him like toys like puppy toys so luna lose you got a robo so <laughs> she doesn't know it but she's going to be different uh when it comes about so i got That's my awesome. fence in backyard and i got my puppy so i'm, excited. I'm super excited for you i'm super excited that puppy is freaking cute as shit that puppy is really adorable yeah he looks super adorable kinda like her so it'll be really confusing it's gonna be great well um, for at first they will be different sizes that's true. That's true. Until I get to those, like, um, they get to the same size where I can do those two, like the, the double, double leashes. Yeah. So, um, she's eating a big ear. She's happy. She's happy as hell, but she doesn't know it that the, the, her world's going to change tomorrow. It's going to change. So that's, but she ha- understood every word you just said. And she's she just did. like, mom, it's it cool. Was like, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> and Charlie Brown teacher. Big ear. Wah, 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 wah. Yep. Yeah. Ugh. That's my bright spot. Which is, I'm super excited um, for you. Yeah, so Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier. Oh, um, we finally finished that series, by the way. Finally. You know what? Like, part of me, like, hates that um, Chris Evans, you know, Captain America, can't make it back into the series because he's dead. But, know. you know, his butt know. will live in infamy. It will. It will indeed. 
Yeah. I also think I had dreams about Chris Evans last night, but I don't recall what they were. I mean, that's a shame. I know. You should remember those things. should be etched in your brain. I know. <laughs> I, we'll, pro- we'll just blame my kid for getting me up at 430 in the morning. What the fuck was that? I mean, I get up at five because I have to, but. Nope. Oh, oh no, I'm not going to, I'm going to hold that. I was going to think, ah, there's a reason I was up. Well, that I was doing it at five o'clock in the morning, but we're going to hold that. Oh, we'll, we'll hold pause it. on that. We'll hold that. Just keep mustache. Um, key in my mouth. Um, Coolio. So, um, we don't have any good Chris Evans news, uh, besides the fact that he's hot and his, his butt is perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been thinking about him a lot though, because of the book that you and I we're recording two episodes this weekend because yeah. I'm going on vacation. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so we need to get both of these done because they're of, you know, timing and when they're coming out and stuff like that. Now so I'm why you're thinking about Captain America. Really? I mean, yeah. Okay. Well, because he plays a superhero in movies and oh, it's like sort of oh, like, yes. it's yes, like yes. pretty modeled the after the Avengers. Yeah, the, yeah, Helios, the Helios. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would have already aired. That one is Sleepless in Sicily, and that one's airing the yeah. 20... What the fuck is the day? I don't know. Uh, today, 28th? I don't know. Tuesday, the guys. Tuesday. <laughs> Today's the 23rd. So um, while I was working today, I had I put on Lucifer, and I just started... God, I, he's I hot. Literally from the first episode, and there was many times where I had to stop working and look at my screen and just stop and be like, this is the most beautiful man I've ever seen in my entire life. He was on some series um, He's where he played a whole- like a doctor that was like addicted to Coke. I don't remember what it was. We'll, have to, we'll discuss that later. Yeah. He was hot well, on that You too. can come, fucking come and get it. I mean, you throw a yeah. leg over it. Oh, nope, throw nope. all the legs over it. I'm sorry, what? Nobody addicted to Coke is cute. Well, no, but he in real life is not addicted to coke. We don't think. No, so anyway. no, no, no. I mean, no. But he is. Oh my god, he's fucking beautiful. I'm just saying. From no, I, I, I'm with you. Meth and coke. <laughs> Meth and coke. You know no. what? I, I don't shame you, but I don't want to throw a leg over it. No. I, Hold I, back I, on that one. But I also had a toy collection that made it worth it. I'm just gonna say. That. <laughs> ah. Pieces coming together in my mind. Got it. When you find. <laughs> I'll deal with your bullshit. <laughs> nice. All right, girls. You want to come right. back and talk about this fucking book? Yep. Let's take a little moment. Like a little respite. Talk about with her therapist. And I want to go to that therapy appointment. <laughs> Let's do it. I love it. <laughs> nice segue. All right. Uh-huh. What's that, Luna? Oh, you want to start a podcast? <coughs> okay, so what's it going to be about? <coughs> History of the Byzantine Empire and how it relates to the Holy Roman Church through its culture, religious practices, and societal norms? Wow, that's intense. So how are you going to distribute your podcast to the world? <coughs> Anchor.fm? Good call, loons! You know that Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other platforms. That way you can spend more time chasing your brother Sherman and soaking up some sunbeams. I know Sherman can be a jerk, but he's just a cat, remember? And the other thing, it has everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Anchor.fm is like one-stop podcast creation. Plus, it's free. I mean, as a podcast spokesdog, you have no idea why things hold monetarily meaning but just know free is a good thing (laughs) yes so everyone should download the free anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started (laughs) okay there's no need for that language i think our enthusiasm is enough to encourage people to try it out (laughs) seriously byzantine history not like a dog treat or most doggy accessible park review (laughs) okay i mean fine but if you have more listeners than us no busy bones for like a week. <coughs> oh, I mean a, a day. <coughs> I can't stay mad at you. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. So uh, Sunny has something to uh, say to the readers as someone who does not typically read this sort of thing, I suppose. 
Mm -hmm. Sonny, what's your morning slash um, tip? Yes, mm -hmm. tip. Oh, Just a tip. tip. Let me tell you that the gay is the days, the she is the days, and the hems and whoever else in between. Get your batteries ready. Plug your toys in. You're gonna want them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's accurate. And if you don't think you are, you're fucking lying. You're lying. <laughs> Or you just don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. If you have, if you have a partner, make sure that partner is available to you. FYI, if you've purchased the BuzzFeed <laughs> clit <laughs> stimulator, you ain't gonna get it for months. They're gonna send you a free um, erotica story. It sucks. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> just read this instead. Just read this instead. Mm -hmm. Yep. My bestie, who is fucking a Coke can, if you will. Uh, that's real life. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I missed that. What, what Hang on. That? Let's go back. My bestie, who's whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. <laughs> so rewinding. Of a man. <laughs> okay. So he legitimately, he is like that big. That's what she says. Oh my God! There's a well, legitimate cocaine cock. It was, it was like big pictures. This isn't real. Anywho, <laughs> I I'm just flashing back to Bad Boy Heaven. Yeah, that she was a little overclumped by this this book. So I don't keep have any. In mind. I don't have any cans near me. Yes, ma'am. With your yeah. wow, get that away from me! Ouch! But she also but good for her, man. <laughs> I mean, right? Audiobook. I hope you were not around other people. You know what? I actually got it from Audible because I was like, I'm trying to figure out how I was going to finish oh, it. Oh, right. Time. That's what she said, mm -hmm. and I was like. You didn't listen. actually did it. Did, I did. No, I finished okay. the, the book book because I was like, I can't listen to these people talk like this. I just can't. I can't. No, oh, that's what she said she was like, I'm out of my mind. Yeah, I'd be like, I can't. I'm at work, dude. Yeah, <laughs> work, dude. My nipples are hard. I can't do this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. At one point, I will say, <clears throat> I told my husband I was going to tell the story. Um. But it's not like super explicit. Uh. So at one point, I was reading the what is referenced in the first chapter but then like is played out in real time toward the end of the book and prologue. it's the morning of the wedding oh yeah That's prologue though right but it's not like the action is played out later part of the action is yeah yeah I, what, I snipped that out from a mile away and all it did was tell me i'm here for it oh yeah 100 <laughs> percent. i texted i texted veronica i said I'm so happy that she's actually getting married to them. Like she's not his mistress. Like I think if he, if she had been his mistress, I've been really upset about it. Yeah. Um, but I was reading like the action of it as it plays out later in the book. And it was like late and I'm laying in bed and just like reading unadulterated smut on my Kindle. And my husband walks through the door and starts like, getting ready for bed and talking to me about this like art stuff that he's been working on. And I'm so, so proud of him and he's doing so well with it. And he started a tea public store and he sold some shit. Like, I love you, baby. Like FYI, so, so proud of you. Should we include his, his link? His I will ask him if he wants to be associated with this bullshit. Cause um, I buy something. Okay. Already I mean, I'll you send can always it to just you. send it to me. I could always just send it to you. Hey, I know you in real life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> really? really? Um, so anyway, he, this is the second fucking time during the course of this podcast where I have been watching or reading like just total smut. And he walks through the door to talk to me about art. And I looked at him with this like stupid grin on my face, just staring at him. And he was like, finally, after like a few minutes goes, why are you looking at me like that? And I was like, um, because I cannot even describe to you the explicitness of the scene that I am reading right now. And you're trying to talk to me about fucking art. Okay. Cause like right now there's like face writing going on and like, I can't, I cannot listen to anything you're saying. right now. 
I it's also like, it's white noise. It's white yeah, noise everything you're saying is going in one ear and out the other because what's yep. happening in my mind is that um, a lot of sexy times are happening right now in front of my Kindle. Can we discuss this later? And he said, sure. He laughed at me really hard. Yep. So I guess that's just going to be a theme that I'm reading explicit material and my husband talks to me about art. Oh, you know, we, we talked about this. last time that no. happened was during Bridgerton. Oh, oh, I told you my mom's watching Bridgerton, right? I told her, I said, mm-hmm. you need to tell me when you get to the point. She's like, what point? I said, you'll know what point you'll know <laughs> exactly you'll what I'm know. About. I said, you'll know because you'll make you fucking pissed off as much as it made us fucking pissed off. I said, you'll, you'll get it. You'll know. Um, I'm pulling up Boy. the, um, re, um, because none of us did the. Oh summary, yeah, we so didn't even gonna, discuss the I'm summary. Gonna, we I'm gonna do, do it. That. I'll do it. That's fine. My mother. My mother. <laughs> you want to get off? Have I got the book for you? The end. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's really not much to this plot, so we're gonna have to add some shit in here. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. American Queen by Sierra Simone. It starts with a stolen kiss under an English sky, and it ends with a walk down the aisle. It starts with the president sending his best friend to woo me on his behalf and ends with my heart split in two. Wow, is that the only thing split in two, right? Um, it starts with buried, buried secrets. Put on your heart. <laughs> and dangerous desires. It ends with the three of us bound together with a hateful love sharper than any barbed wire. My name is Greer Galloway, and I serve at the pleasure of the president of the United States. This I don't think Grandpa of an American queen. What? I don't think Grandpa would be proud. Is it what you just said? Oh, oh Grandpa Leo? I don't think Grandpa Leo, if oh, he knew what, Grandpa Leo knew what was going on, he would be like, yeah, Greer, maybe not. Maybe mm-hmm. not. Um, so we got a lot to fill in here. That's what she said. So we got to go from, okay, so we start, so this book is told, it flashes forward and flashes backwards in time. Yeah, um, the first part of it, there's a lot of flashbacks. I honestly have to say that the prologue gave way too much. I wish they would not have said what they did in the prologue, personally speaking. Well, you know what, though? I I totally understand why you're saying that. But then at the same time, like for me... It's, it made a sense of relief for me. It, yeah, it gave me a sense of relief going forward, knowing that like it was going to be okay. Because as I was going, I was like understand how any of this is going to get resolved right and, and and i've read enough historical romances that i was like i do not want her to be a mistress and doing this horrible you know like, like right. horrible stuff but like not uh, that it's not where i was going it was like in doing this stuff and then getting treated horribly i should say right like you didn't want her to be like hidden or mm-hmm. like stashed job. away somewhere yeah. i do agree with that but what i mean is looking at the verbiage I was like, oh, okay. Like, there are certain things that are probably going to... Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. No, I do agree with you. Bruises on each other's faces. Thank God, Mm -hmm. Walter. Thank God, Embry's there. Thank God, Ash is there. And whatever. But, like, I'm saying the verbiage is what... No, I fair. I, no, I fair. see. I see. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, it, if she had just kept that, like the whole thing about him tucking in things because there was a bruise here that somebody mm-hmm. gave them. And and I get it. Yeah, no, I, I, I see what you're where you're going. I totally do. I'm male. That could have been the meat of your sandwich, girl. I'm about to get hungry. That is oh. the top sesame bun. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. Okay, so we got Greer Galloway, who yeah. at the time of the start of the book, when the real start of the book is 16 years old. So we're going to start from when she's 16, because even though it jumps back and forth in time, let's go tr- chronologically so we can give the um, the listener an idea of what's right. happening. Did you feel like the back and forth was a good or a bad portion of the book? I did not enjoy it. Um, I'm 50, 50 on it. Like I liked it, but I could see like, it'd be better. If, I don't know. I, I d- here's the thing. I don't think it would have been as interesting if they would have just done all the shit when she was 16 and 20 and then started the book like that in the present yeah, day. That's true. I think I, it would, I think it's more effective going back me. and forth. Yeah. But I think there's points where it could have been more effective to be in a certain point. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Like not in the past or 
I mean, honestly, this is just me. I would have liked her to start at 18, not 16. That's just, that's, yeah. And that is me and the age thing. So we will get into that. We, um, that. Yeah. we will get into that. Yeah. Um, so we, we, if we're looking at time, like we're looking at the timeline, we're going to start at Greer at 16 meeting Ash as a like war hero, hero. Um, and they meet at a party and she's fighting with Abilene, her cousin, who she's been going, she has gone to um, boarding school with. And Abilene has always treated her like garbage. And she's never really understood why she treats her like garbage. And Dash is because he's like, because she's jealous of you because mm -hmm. you're fucking gorgeous. And she's <clears> got <throat> such a weird like sense of her, like, like not weird, but she has a like, she doesn't have a sense of herself, I should say, because she has these urges and she doesn't understand what they mean. Um, she meets Merlin. <laughs> Merlin. Merlin. What's the last? What's the I, know, I know you all do stunt casting, but I have to interject here. Yeah, go for it. Tom Hiddleston. Who? Lucky. As Merlin? Yeah. Tom Hiddleston? Yeah. I can see it. Mm, is he like, described very much i don't know if like his i could see what you yeah, mean though like it. a tall slender like yeah, yeah i mean i just want to like lick tom hiddleston from his but here's what i love about it is it interjects a little bit of mythology in it yeah you know it's funny i actually almost picked him for a different character but i didn't so that would have been interesting um, i guess one thing we didn't say is that this is loosely based on um on camelot so yeah, like on we guinevere and yeah. and arthur I did but we'll not talk know. about it what was that i did not know that i i was like because veronica and i were laughing because i like realized it how what was it tuesday i was like motherfucker how did i not realize this was <laughs> we were significantly into the book when you were like oh i cannot believe i didn't realize it but i mean it's called the new camelot series so and like, i didn't I guess. know that because i just right. like yeah, I didn't. Oh, I, just I should also say that this, so this is the, if you follow us on TikTok, when we made a video asking for kinky book recs, it was for this episode. And the person who, um, maybe we should send her a magnet, but the person who um, recommended. To get in touch. Yeah. Yeah. The person who recommended this book is Tasha and her TikTok handle is oh so much spice with underscores in between each word. Um, so thank you very much, Tasha, for your recommendation. It worked um, out very well. Yes, it did. It did. I, you know, um, so as we're going along, um, so she's like they're both infatuated with each other. So Ash is infatuated with um, Greer, and Greer is like the same. Mm -hmm. So uh, Merlin steps in, and Merlin's like, "Yo, you gotta leave." And at the same time, like they kind of like are separated. They're separated for another five years. Mm -hmm. And and the five year point, a lot of shit happens because um Greer at this point is 20. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she um meets Ash again at another party for Merlin's whatever it's 40th birthday. birthday. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's really his 40th birthday. I was like, really? Wow, okay. Yeah. And um and so at this point, like they have this tr tryst in the and this like like a museum garden, and he fucking goes for it. And then all of a sudden he's like, "Oh no, I can't!" And she's heartbroken because she's he in doesn't love actually with kiss her. Yes, he does. I don't. Does he? Yes. Don't they oh, kiss? He... I'm pretty sure they kiss. I forget. So Sunny, do you the remember? Same time, but at the same time, she's sitting. She had been sending. She, him they kiss the last... in the in the garden. Okay. They had been sending each other. Well, she had been sending him these emails that I, at one point I just put my hands over my head. That was like, no, no, please stop. Please stop. Because they were like, you're not getting a response. Please, just stop. Just stop. I was like, they're hot. No, but I, I actually put my hands over my head face when he was like, Oh, I have these. And I'm like, oh. I know. Oh. No, thank you. I was like, jump out the window, Greer. Jump out the window. I, know, I, was like, <laughs> I do not want to relive my 16-year-old self. Oh, I would have I mean, died. So she goes on like pretty in depth about how she's like fingering herself, thinking to him about mm -hmm. him and like going and like where she's touching, how she's coming. And 
she keeps she doesn't get any responses yet she keeps fucking writing and i'm like oh my god girl oh my god i think Great. that was the last email she Great. sent yeah it was the last but there was other ones before that was like i wish you were here blah blah, blah. i was like still mm-hmm. like oh my god someone shoot me I know. so when um she meets up with him again she they don't bring up the emails funny enough but she of course yeah right. she sees that he um he's engaged so he just has gotten engaged to his his fiance jenny and so she leaves in tears to the par- from the party and happens upon embry ash's best friend um who he saved who he rescued um they're both soldiers and she and embry have a fantastic evening and then go fucking do the in and out in and out and it's her first time so she loses it to embry Mm -hmm. Um, anybody else want to take up or just keep going um you go all right that they at this point keep talking about we're both heartbroken over somebody that is yes yeah thank you yes into us and anybody with a little bit of like intuition can look at the prologue and go okay well embry has a bite mark and this on the other y'all i don't know how ash does what he does but i'm here for it <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i mean i honestly <sighs> i'm gonna be the soup one it's like i didn't catch it like that um and that's i like, caught that he very specifically did not use pronouns oh see i didn't even catch when that he said was... little prince and little princess i was like i'm done i'm fucking <laughs> <laughs> so they have a fucking crazy end of sex where they both are in love with each other by the end of it because like it they they've literally rocked each other's worlds and um so she leaves and she leaves her number and her name and he never calls her back so she's heartbroken so now she's got these two men who have broken her heart and we we fast forward five years into the future. And again, in the book, it's not like this, but we're fast for the timeline. We're going to fast forward five years. Um, let me also just preface. I don't think that this was in the description that you read, um, but Merlin, when she is oh no, very young, no. very young, keep um, your kisses. Yes. So Merlin, when she's like seven or eight years old, tells her this is the first time she meets Merlin tells her um keep your kisses to yourself yeah and, and she so literally has done that yes and she has done that and the two times the exact two times that she doesn't do it it results in her getting her heart broken so the yep. first time she kisses ash and then he is like he's in the army he or navy yeah. mil- no, um, marines marines in the marines yeah. he's, so he's in the marines he goes off to war and then he she kisses embry and then he like never calls her again so yeah. Anyway, and Merlin is like every time you, he comes on, you're like, oh fuck. But at the same time, like he comes with a sense of he's almost like the well, he's the Drosselmeyer. He comes and he 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 starts the, he 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 mixes the magic. He makes it happen. He he moves the story along. Yeah, she um, compares him to a wizard. Like she called actually in the book. I think she says when Are I you was a wizard. Oh, she yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Because she says, "Are you a wizard?" He's like, she's like, he didn't answer me. Right. I think she even says, like, I was cursed by a wizard when I was seven years old or something like that. It's like one of the opening lines of the book. So then we move five years in the in the future and she's teaching at was she teaching at Georgetown? Georgetown? I think think Georgetown. And she's teaching uh medieval lit, I think, right? Yeah. I think. I don't know. You said lit and now all I can think is clit. So like just keep going. I think medieval medieval lit. Um, which would make sense for Arthurian legends. And Embry shows up, Embry being the vice president of the United States, to come collect her because the president, Ash, wants to see her. Mm-hmm. And so that is where the story moves from there. My nether regions, when you talk about Ash. Mm, your nether regions? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yup. Yup. I do love the name Ash. I always think of Ash and the Evil Dead. I think of Ash from. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, but I mean, uh, yeah. Um. So, 
Does that kind of catch us up? Like, I don't want to give away too so. much about no, like, what I don't goes either. on. Um, I don't either. So I think this is enough to move it into the compliment sandwich, don't you think? I think so. You ladies think. Okay. So those new listeners, welcome. welcome. Um, our, um, how we do things here is we do the compliment sandwich. We do our first, uh, the top one is our pro. Our middle, or our meat in the middle is our like cons, what we didn't so much like. And then our bottom bun is another pro. So we can end it on a happy note. Um, Miss Sunny, would you like to start with a pro? I would. Yay. That old ash. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I have had a lover similar to, not to that level, but Lord have <laughs> Lord. <laughs> How do you feel about it? Uh, about Ash? Oh my God. Um, it's a tie. It's a t- it's a tie. Like I never thought like I'd have to choose between the Ash or Embry, and I love Embry a lot too. Ash, though, there's it's something about the fucking control. I love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am not cut out to be a submissive. I can tell you that much right now. But really? Yeah, no. So for I'm for too the- like I'm no, I'm just yeah. not. I don't have any problem with it. Like, good for her, not for me. Like, I just I'm too. I don't know. I just can't, like, don't fucking tell me what to do. <laughs> so, it's not, I don't want to get too deep into like preferences for me, but like, I just, I don't think I could go that far into like a controlling aspect of a sexual relationship. So maybe we should go into this a little bit. Like, so yeah, Ash a is idea. a dominant and Greer is a sub. And then uh, Embry is a. Embry is a switch. Thank you. I was like, I don't know what to call him. So thank you. Oh, he's a switch. Yeah. She, it, it's funny how Greer reacts with one guy as opposed to the other. She's a submissive but for Greer Ash, but she's a dominant for. When you read or listen to Greer talking about Embry, it's a switch. Mm-hmm. Like I want to sit on his face. I want him to do this. I know. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, well, that's a switch. Yeah. 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 She, there's a definite, like, she takes control of that. And I think, honestly, if it had been any other sort of relationship, I don't think it would have worked. But for this book, I think it worked really well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it worked well. Um, Ash is, oh, there's something about him, like, besides him being, like, so dominant but caring at the same time and also being an absolute awe of Greer mm-hmm. is what sold it for me because he was like here's this beautiful 10 years younger than me woman who is like a young woman still and knows what I want it's almost almost as if she was been made for me and there's something kind of sexy about that if you like that sort of thing like, I think that's the other part of it is like, if you like being a sub, you'll like that sort of he, she was made for me. I think part of it. I don't know. I mean, I'm, again, I'm just talking from my ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that I did love about Ash too, is that when they meet, I was like, oh, this is going to be so fucking bad because she's 16 years old and he's like 26. And this is just like, please, oh, God, the- don't let this happen. Like, please, please, please don't let this happen. And I was so worried about it, but he doesn't like, he's just, he kisses her, but he's like, at one point he says, please tell me you're 18, please. And she's like, I'm not. Yeah. And so he doesn't let that go any further than what, I mean, they obviously wanted to go further, but he's just like, you are literally jail bait. Well, though he does suck on her finger and he sucks the blood off of her finger, which I was like, is this sexy? It is. Why is my downstairs <laughs> region feeling weird right now? Am I in the blood play? No. Why is this hot? Why is this hot? <laughs> is this hot? Oh, yeah. You texted me and you were like, "It is." 
is him sucking the blood off her finger supposed to be hot? And I was like, I don't know, but it is. And you texted me like the same thing at the same time. I was just like, I don't know, but like, you just got to, you know, you got to roll with it, Ray. It's what fine. Your body wants what your body wants. What your body wants what it wants, man. It wants to suck somebody's fucking blood up. But apparently it does. Um, Sunny, does that, does that cover your top one, darling? And then some. <laughs> I love it. Ray, what is your top bun, dear? My top bun is actually how well written this book is. Um, in this past, I don't know, six months, I don't know how the fuck long have we been doing this podcast by now. Um, uh, seven? A lot. It's a, seven. a while. I don't know. Guys, it feels like forever, but I love Time it. Time is I meaningless. Every, it's, a, it's a flat yes. circle. Um, <laughs> it's a flat circle. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> um, true detective um i i've read some garbage i've read some garbage erotica where it was like okay like it was just getting through and it was pretty much just like i could read i could get this for free online it's fine guys like it was just point put slot a into slot b we're done Mm -hmm. this here had like um some beautiful prose absolute beautiful prose and i was actually very in, there was actually some couple funny parts like i mean for me as a nerd i'm gonna read you one of my favorite parts please do it suddenly what ash said back in the bedroom made sense jealousy as a word with too many meanings it's a tardis of a word bigger on the inside and <laughs> a small mean thing on the surface but a complicated dance of emotions and negotiations within Ah, oh, anybody mm-hmm. who uses my freaking the TARDIS as yep. a metaphor has my heart. Um, I really was very, very much impressed by um, by the pros in this book. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, the other one I really liked, um, but I wanted to know what if there was something wrong with me. If I ever felt confused <laughs> by the dynamic between me and Ash, all the blurriness is wiped away. I can see it clearly now. The difference between consensual power exchange and the actual violence men can do to women. I know yeah. immediately what Melwaz means by teaching a lesson. And it wouldn't be playful spankings bound by, bounded by a safe word and affection. I mean, to me, that right there is beautiful. Like, I mean, that's beautiful in the fact that it's like, this sums up what we've all been saying. Like, this is what, when you talk about, like what is what is a safe word what is cool mm-hmm. for you what works what is consensual what is actual the word consensual mean mm-hmm. that's it um can i go forward into my pro because it plays into that absolutely go for it okay so one of the things that i really loved about this book was as a person who is not like in my real life is not part of that kind of kink world or like that type of i'm just not it's not part of my life totally fine with everyone. Like I'm not judging. I'm just saying it's not a part of my life. So reading, like we've all read it poorly done. And then we have been fortunate enough to read, to read it when it's also well done, like four plan words. It was very well done, clearly very well researched. And then we got to this one and it was like, even the way that she had no experience with this world. And so when she started exploring that with Ash, the way that he talked to her about it and the way that she um, came to understand how this would work, how that dynamic would work between the two of them. I love the way that he described described it to her that like, I might be the dominant one, but you really hold all of the control because the moment you say that word, we're done. I loved like how much consent was discussed and there was even a moment. Um, I want to give to <laughs> give it away, but there's like a moment where um, things that he wants her to do. She's like, I don't know that I can do this. Like there's someone else here. Like someone else will see me do this. And um, he looked at her and there was just like an exchange in their eyes where she described like, he's waiting for me to say it. He yeah. wants to, at one point he, he even says to her, do you have something to say to me? And she thinks about it and she's like, no, I don't have anything to say to you. But she also knew that if she 
didn't want to do this because he says to her, if, if something I tell you to do will hurt you either physically or emotionally, that's when you use the word. Right. Right. And so she chose in that moment to keep going, but like she could have said one word and it would have been done. And that's, I loved that about, about that explanation of the relationship is that like the power really does remain with the sub because she, she can say no. It's not like she's being forced to do any of this. She's allowed to say no. She's allowed to use her word and then her safe word. And then like, it will all just stop. Yeah. I just, I really enjoyed like the discussion surrounding that and, and the explanations of it, because from my understanding, unlike 50 shades of gray, like this is how this is supposed to work. Right. And like, I was just thinking that, cause it's like, you know, what having fucking red 50 shades of gray <laughs> and, and, and other things where you don't get, you don't so much get the sub perspective and narrative. And I thought that was, she was really good because she was kind of like, <clears throat> she even said a couple of times, I'm humiliated, but I love it. And it was, mm-hmm. that's fine. It's, t- I'm the, yes, great. And I would like to know why. And she tells you why she loves it. And it's kind of like, it takes that stigma off of it, which I thought was really great. Yeah. Because like, there's obviously a reason why people like being subs. Mm-hmm. If not, they wouldn't be fucking subs. Like, I mean, um, yeah, I, there was her, the re, the interaction between the two of them was really great. There, um, the couple of scenes that were fucking, fucking hot where when fucking Embry comes in the first time and they're on the phone call with. That's the, what I'm talking about. Yeah. With Carpathian. Was it Carpathian? Yeah. The yeah. Carpathians or whatever. Jesus Christ. And she's Jesus. fucking riding his leg. She's riding Ash's leg, Ash. riding herself to completion on there his it. leg. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> It, I mean, she leaves a wet spot on his pants, on mm-hmm. Ash's pants, and then she has to lick it off. You know what I was thinking about? I was like, who is going to, I mean, it's a tuxedo, so it'll probably be like dry cleaned. But who, yeah. who is the person who is going to be dealing with this? Like how, who does his sheets? Belvedere. You know what I mean? Like who launders, oh, poor Belvedere. I love, fucking loved Belvedere. Yeah, I was Belvedere is his personal else, assistant. Was anybody else managing Belvedere as this cute ass gay man? Gay oh, one hundred percent. Yes, gay black man. I also, like if you look forward in the series, he has like a novella at the end. But I wouldn't. If you're going to plan on reading more of it, Sunny, I think you said you were going to read the next two books. Don't look into the descriptions of like the last two novellas at the end of the series because you will get major fucking spoilers. Mm. FYI, just don't look ahead. This look on your face like, I will fucking do whatever I want. <laughs> I'll do what I want. <laughs> so now that we went Bitch, I will all, do whatever I plan. Yeah. And my plan is to fucking read them. To fucking um, spoil it all. Spoil the shit out of it. Um, <laughs> see, flat <laughs> I don't know what that just popped in my head. Going to the zoo. Um, so let's talk about some, let's talk about some calm up in this piece. So Let's talk about meat. All right. I mean, I can go. <laughs> How about I go first? I'll do cons. I'll talk some meat. So, what we didn't like about this book. So, we all laugh because. So, my thing is, I wanted to see some. All right. I wanted to see a train. I wanted to see them running some train on her while running train on themselves, bitches. I wanted to see man on man on girl. And I didn't get any of that. That's fine. I mean, we got some other things. We got, we got, um, um, <laughs> I keep doing the hand motion. You, I mean, there was sexual touching between the there men. Was, there there was stimulation with hands and two right. men, um, which is uh, in a lot of men, male, male, that's usually the first scene of sex. And then l- later on is usually the oblig- obligatory get a tube of lube and then we'll, you know. Grab but, the lube. Uh, um, hey, mom, turn this off. If you have not, I, I, no, Veronica's mom, turn it up. 11. Turn it off. No, turn, <laughs> Jesus Christ, please turn this off. <laughs> and don't read this book. No, I'm going to say, my don't mom, read who's, it. Who's listening to, who's watching the Bridgertons right now? No, no. Oh, Christ. 
Um, that's the only thing I had to say about it. It was like, that was like, I, it was such a build up, and I was excited. I was like, oh, yeah, let's fucking do it. And I'm like, oh, that's it? Really? I mean, it's fine. I mean, it's still that- odd. I mean, like, whatever. <laughs> if you got a. <laughs> You got a vibrator from BuzzFeed that finally fucking came, <laughs> and so did you. Um, <laughs> that's my con. I mean, fair. You have two more books, though, so maybe you'll finally get to see it. I mean, I... Okay, keep going. I mean, they do talk about it. Well, they do. Like, they talk about, like, who's going to hit her for... Like, not hit her, hit it up Oh, first. but no, like, even, um, like, at one point, Embry is talking about because well, he's he has he has done things more than Ash yeah. has, so yeah. Yeah. We're talking about how they're gonna do it. Right. Um on. Sonny Darling, what is your meat? To me it's always Evelyn. Oh yes. She's so Ooh. fucking awful. She's the worst. What do you hate about Abilene? It's Anything like, in particular you want to talk about? I hate about Abilene. He's the fucking worst. Oh, that's sorry. Hey, hey, cousin. Uh, I'm so totally jealous of you. Can you just tell me what hotel you're at? Bitch, please. No. <laughs> yeah, she's the fucking worst. I mean, there's no point. There's no point even when they're younger, where there's like that that bit of... Um, I don't this you are the only person I have in the world and you're the only person I have in the world let's be friends there's not even that it's like she's jealous from her from like from Jump Street I'm like I don't understand like the, whatever she's jealous Evelyn from Jump Street dick. huh she's jealous from Jump Street she's jealous from fucking Jump Street man yeah we don't want to give away like major plot points but Abilene is the fucking worst the I mean if fucking we can hit worst. Her, with, her and Morgan with a car let's do yeah. it uh-huh. Let's fucking do it. You know what? Like, it's all jumping in like a fucking SUV and just mow them down. God, they're the worst. Um, no, I don't. And I say, all violence. these people are fake. Okay. Don't I mean, like. I don't condone violence. No. Except for certain people. But they will remain nameless on this podcast. Um, all right. So, mine is um, the unexpected angst in this fucking book. Yeah. Now, it was. It's like you were saying earlier, it's a very well written book. My issue, um, and it doesn't doesn't make me not love I still enjoyed the book very much, but I was not prepared for the level of angst involved. I did not realize like how deep the the pain was going to run between the three of them Mm -hmm. and also between her and Ash and her and Embry separately. Um, And then also between Ash and Embry, it was just like, I think at many times I texted at least one of you and said like their pain is palpable. I mean, it's so, I literally wondered if I would even want to continue with the next two books because I know they're just going to be so fucking angsty. I know. I I, I, I had the same thought. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to. I, I think I will because of a conversation I had back and forth with, with a TikToker, but like, um, I just wasn't expecting it. There was a lot I was not expecting in this book. Uh, one of which was how fucking hot it was. Um, but I, and apparently I will be reading some more Sierra Simone, but I just I, really I was, priest. did you get priest? I did. Yeah. I want to read center. Um, so anyway, I just wasn't expecting the level of angst. Now, it was very good. Like it should not, unless it's something that like really, really bothers me and you hate reading angsty shit. Um, I wouldn't. Car crash angst. Car crash angst as Ray This, wasn't, this was not car crash angst. This wasn't like to the level of like car crash angst that we've read before. Yeah. I mean, but I also read car crash angst and then stopped car crash angst so that I could read this because like I knew I needed to start getting this done so that we could record. Um, so like, You're it was to just a lot of, from it. And it was tough. Yeah. Like it was just a lot of angst all at once. And I had like a total hangover for like a full day after this book. I was just like, and so I started our next one because I was like, this one will be lighter. I guarantee it, is, it will it be lighter. Light. And it's much lighter. Yeah. So that kind of like helped me get over it. But there was just a lot of, a lot of pain and sadness that I wasn't expecting in like a threesome book. You know? like, right. I just stick, it in, stick it in every hole. Come on. That's all we need. Like, stick it 
just wasn't cool. really. We just talk about it. That's fine. It's good. Right. I just wasn't expecting that. Um, but yeah, it was, I mean, it was still good. It was. Agreed. Uh, Ray, do you want to talk about, talk to me about your bottom bun? All right. So my bottom bun is how this is the fucking Arthurian legend. This is amazing. Yes, it is. Oh my God. So I pulled up some, um, King Arthur, Arthurian legend. So let's all try to figure out who's who. Yes. Can we do that? Yes, do not give that. too many spoilers away, I guess. I mean, even though I don't know how old this book is, but we, let's not do that. Um, <laughs> so Morgan Le Fay is fucking Morgan Le Fay, which is confusing because Morgan Le Fay, um, she's Arthur's half-sister, which makes sense. So I, I guess you're right, uh, you know, in saying that, yes, this is Arthur. Sonny, you said that this was Arthur. But at the same time, like... <sighs> Um, Lancelot also has sex with, mm, <laughs> no, Arthur has sex with someone else and they have, um, um, uh, Galahad. Who does he have sex with? Oh, shoot. Elaine? No. Somebody has sex with Elaine. Lancelot has sex with Elaine and has Galahad. So. Because I have a spoiler for the end of the second book. Do you want to give it? So the other thing is, I don't want to ruin so it. For Percival, someone who hasn't read it. so Percival and Galahad, and Percival's sister. Okay. And, would, and then, oh, I don't know. It's there's a lot here. I think she cribbed things to make it work, and it was fine. Um, because I really, yes, yes, Guinevere and Greer sound alike, but then there's so many other pieces yeah. of parts that can fit. I don't think it's like um, cut and dry who each character is. I feel like there's... I don't think so either. I think that there are like some moving parts. I mean, I get the Merlin and, and Arthur thing, but there's... And also, it doesn't help that there's so many iterations of Arthur's, Arthurian, and the Arthurian legend. Because you have, like, there, I mean, you've got uh, Tennyson's version. There's so many other, Chaucer's version. There's so many different uh, versions of the Arthurian legend that, you know. I, yeah. I don't know. But that's my other pro is how, like, well thought out this book is. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. As how planned she has this for an erotic, random erotic novel. Yeah. Yeah. It is like, I wasn't expecting, I wasn't expecting it to be this well done. I truly wasn't. I mean, once I realized like what was going on, but this kind of like, it's erotica, right? Yeah. I yeah. I mean, so. and like you said, like I wouldn't have expected this level of writing from. Right. And not, and not to, to hate on any erotica, but I mean, I've read some actually some decent erotica. That's like, sure. like we said, E.L. Koslow. Yeah. And um, I read another one, which I, I've never done a review on, um, but it's very good. Um, but, but then I've also read some garbage. So, yeah. I mean, we've read some garbage. I've read some fucking fan fiction that's been just about the same level. Yeah. Right. You know, like, so Yeah. I just I wasn't expecting it to be that no involved and intricate no right exactly and it's like well thought out plot lines with like foreshadowing and mm -hmm. it's it's well done it's very agreed. well done agreed um my so my bottom bun is um uh is actually kind of opposite my bottom bun is the villains because i fucking hate them so much well, like we've we've said that before. It's like right, it's, yeah. Like, and there's more than one. I mean, Abilene, but also Morgan. Like, mm -hmm. I hate them so much. I mean, and to I the point I where it, it, it was like, J -j -j you can't tell me he's fucked so and so, and I was like, and he she's uh -huh. so and so. I was like, oh uh -huh. my god, my brain. Yeah, I know. And it, to the point where, like you've said in the past, I had to like, I had to think that they were um that they were a, they were just so well done and I hated them so much yeah. so I wanted to like I wanted them to be my the middle part of my sandwich but at the same time like they were so well done that I hated yeah. them so much 
I did not like the level. I felt like it, they added to the level of angst that pissed me off. Yeah. yeah. You know, like Agreed. it was just, that was a lot, you know, we could have done with maybe only one of them. Well, especially with Greer, like, because with Greer, she has literally, it's her grandpa Leo, and that's it. And yeah, grandpa Leo uses her. So it's not even like, he loves her and right. everything, but at the same time, he's a fucking user. So right. like, he's, she has literally no one. She has literally no one. Yeah. Right. But like, so, but the villains are so very well written. Yeah. 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 Um, does that take care of our sandwiches over here talking about our sandwich we put the fucking buns on man i mean i guess we did so i'm hungry so do i guess want to take that, a break uh, come back and do some out. stunt casting and some or do we want to soldier on baby uh sunny what do you want to do do you want to take a break and do stunt casting or or do you want to do stunt casting now and come back stunt okay. Casting. okay okay all right i'm pulling up my my i think i have it already up how many did you do ray I did three. I did four. I did four. Okay. I did three. I, what, my one is a joke. Kind of. All right. So I'm going to, do we want to do like put them in the cat in the chat? Like we usually do. Sure. Yeah. Um, Sunny, you sent me one of yours. You told me who one of yours was. Um, do you want to, like put in the chat who your others are, or do you want to just tell us? You could just tell us. Just tell. Um, okay. All right. So let's start with Ash then. Okay. Okay. Sunny, who is your Ash? I went with Jesse Williams. Fuck uh, yes. Jesse Williams is from Grey's Anatomy, girl. He is. Oh, you don't watch Grey's Anatomy. He's from, he's Jackson Avery from Grey's Anatomy. He's hot as oh, fuck. Was he, oh, he was the guy that like the whole thing with Chicago, right? Uh, I think so. All He's those, an activist. Well, the whole thing with him getting, yeah, okay. There's some some stuff with him, right? I don't Am know. I thinking the same guy? I don't know. Here, let me sh- let me send you a thing. Um, he said that he got a he got attacked, but he hadn't got. Oh no no no! Not that dude. No. Oh okay okay. Um, here let me send you. This is fucking Jesse Williams. Let me just put this in the chat. Um, he plays Jackson Avery and Grey's Anatomy. He's hot as fuck. Yeah, that's the same guy. No, he no, did. not the guy who said he was jumped and he wasn't really. Different guy. That guy was from um, what is that show with um, Empire? That guy's from Empire. Oh, is that the same guy? Mm-mm. They look a lot alike. They're not the same guy. Jesse okay. Williams is um older for sure he is um trying to think of like other stuff he's done and i cannot think of any of it right now um other than jackson avery he's good looking i mean either either one is good looking i would (sighs) throw a leg over both of these gentlemen Mm -hmm. and i also Mm -hmm. like i like your casting sonny i love it yep um ray who is your ash so y'all gonna laugh so i don't know why i started looking at my like i so i have a um if you don't follow us on pinterest pinterest you probably should because i have a um folder that's just random hot people and i was like so when i go into pinterest i keep saying pinterest 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 is that like a hoity toity way of saying pinterest Pinterest. Pinterest. oh my god like like um what's his name from father of the bride oh tom to do the cack yeah it's martin short tom to do the cack martin short yes he would say pinterest Pinterest. So there was this guy who was like, all right. And I liked his pictures as he was younger. He doesn't look the same anymore. These are like older pictures. And it's fine because, I mean, I'd still throw a leg over it. But nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. Um, Here is him. I'm going to put both in the chat. There's one. And then... There is the image. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. Yes. The image address. And here's the second one. This one is young Kennedy right here. 
Oh, Lord. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. His name I get it. Is um, uh, uh, George Eads. And, and he is from CSI. He is from CSI. And mm-hmm. that's, we're not going to, it's fine. Um, but he looks like he'd been in the military. He, Sonny was obsessed with CSI in college. CSI Miami, right? One of the two? Uh, I, don't know. I think he was in Las Vegas, I don't which know. was like the original one. Uh, but I mean, again, throwing a leg over. Mm-hmm. Um, he still looks good. He looks like he, he's he got a square jaw. He can punch somebody. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. That is that. I mean, because I couldn't picture the other person I could picture. I was trying like trying not to picture was um, oh shoot the guy from Nip Nip Tuck. What's his name? McMahon, uh, Julian McMahon. I think his name is. For some reason, that his brain, his I for Let some reason my computer doesn't want to look. Anything Julian up. Mc McMahon. Is that how yeah. you pronounce it? Yeah. Okay, I could see that. As a young, if you look at the young ones, he does for some reason. My, um, I have, like, I can see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like the dark hair. Uh huh. He looks presidential. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. So that's, that is mine. Okay. All right. Well, let me get my mind for you. <laughs> I think we have chosen this actor, um, before for like different things. I don't care. Um, okay. I have not made like my hang on. Why isn't that showing me? Oh, because I'm looking at the wrong one. Hang on. Sorry. It's not casting. I was looking at my spank naughty list. Um, all right. So uh, mine is <laughs> this I'm ridiculous so gentleman right here. So excited. Oh, fuck me. Yes, we've used it before, but I don't fucking care. Don't yeah, we care. have used it before. I, I don't, don't care. care. Um, I don't care. This is, uh, how do you pronounce his last name? It's Ian Samohander. Samohander. So yeah. that he, is he from the Vampire Diaries? Diaries, yeah. Okay. Um, he's just so fucking hot. Um, but... Ash is described as having dark hair and uh, green eyes, I think they said. So, I mean, colored contacts, like if you need to. But um, he has like the strong square jaw and dark hair. And he clearly takes care of himself. And he just looks like he could be a fucking menace to society. Yes, he does. You know, like, I will fuck you up. But I will also be really charismatic and like charming and kind when i need to be you know yeah 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 all right so we're gonna go who do we go to next um i feel like greer should be next right let's do that let's let's smush them together like smush them together all right right who is your greer my greer oh i only have one picture of her because i think it's enough because she's fucking gorgeous as fuck and um here we are okay got it Evan totally fucking rachel yes. wood Thank on you. it yes okay because i don't know when she turned fucking gorgeous but she turned gorgeous all of a sudden it was like everything she was in i was like this woman is fucking beautiful she's beautiful she is really beautiful talk about throw a yeah. leg over it. i threw a leg over her too <laughs> Her fucking face. I mean, she's beautiful. Yeah, she really is. So my Greer is is uh oh sorry. I'll just send this to you. Okay. And then you can uh, bask in the glory. What? No. That's no. Not Katy Perry. No, it's not Katy Perry. Oh. I don't know why that says that, but okay. I just liked the photo. Oh, Florence Pugh. It's, it's yes, Florence, Florence Pugh. Pugh. Fuck yeah. yes. 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 Right? Do you Fuck like it? Do you agree? Yeah. She is so amazing. And she like very distinct. She had okay, oh. so Greer is described as having like a, a cleft chin. And like Florence Pugh doesn't like really have a cleft chin, but like it no. I think if you put I think it's the nose too, because she's got a little bit of a button nose. Yeah. Yeah. Like I just felt like 
she doesn't really have a cleft chin, but if you put makeup, like they can yeah, make anything, can right? It, it's yeah. like, you just put like a little bit of makeup on her chin. Like she has, she has like non-traditionally beautiful features. Agreed. Do you know what I mean? Like, so she, I feel like yes. she would be, she would be cast really well in the way that Greer describes herself is like, she, Greer doesn't think she's beautiful because she's always comparing herself to Abel, to Abilene or whatever the fuck. I fucking hate her. But like, she's always <laughs> being compared to Abilene. And so she doesn't think that she's beautiful, which is absurd. Have you watched Midsummer with her in it? No, I have not. It's, I don't, I think. You know, I don't do the horror films. But I think you'd actually like it. Like, it's not, it's not like jump out at you horror. It's not like jump scares. It's psychological horror. Like, it was honestly, I still think about it and it gives me chills. Uh. In In the sense of, in the sense of it's fucked up, but she comes out of it pretty good at the end of it. Um, but she's like you said, she's unconventionally, conventionally pretty. Like she's not mm-hmm. like, I, I don't think like if you were to put her next to Evan Rachel Wood, people would be like, fucking Evan Rachel Wood. You wouldn't see Florence Pugh, but on her own and like, <sighs> she's beautiful. Like she's yeah. actually fucking, it doesn't have to be on her own. But like, if you're comparing the two, but also the same time as Evan Rachel Woods, like, besides, like, most of us are way taller than Florence Pugh is. She's, like, a tiny little thing. She's mm-hmm. tiny. Right. Um, Which, it's funny, because I guess she's in Scarlet Witch, or Scarlet, or Black Yeah, Widow. she plays, um, she plays, um, what's her face's sister? Yeah, which is, like, Scarlett Johansson, even though short, is taller than Florence Pugh. Yeah. Yeah. Also, oh, Florence gorgeous. Pugh and fucking Little Women. Oh, Right. Although no one believed that she was like 14 years old in that movie. That's fine. Oh, well, no, but like, hello, it's fine. It's fine. Um, uh, Yeah. Yeah. I love Florence. I think she's so awesome. And also like her hair is really, is discussed a lot during the book. Yes. So I like her hair sort of, to me, fits that like silky golden. Yeah. Like waterfall like, that is discussed so many at times. some point like in the summertime her hair turns white gold or white almost white almost silver and i was like you putting sun in in that bitch um when i was a kid my hair got that blonde I mean, what, it doesn't what, anymore too, like, when but I when little. i was a kid yeah, yeah it got like super super blonde they used to call me the um they used to call me caroline from um carolyn from um oh poltergeist because my hair was like just straight and like right i was a serious doe head yeah Aww. yeah she died anyhow wow all right it just we did. taking it, it to a dark place so we're all gonna right. do embry right oh my god yes tell me who your fucking embry is okay so i'm gonna uh, hold on give me one second give give up give, give up give up you're gonna be like yeah that makes sense i actually had another person i'm gonna tell you about the person i took out i had aaron tevitt trevitt tevitt oh from graceland i don't know I was, uh, I know he yeah. was from Schmigadoon and also from a um, whole bunch of musicals and from yeah. Les Miserables. Yeah. Yes. I had him he, in there first. Yes. Um, he played, I, we talked about this, I think, via text. He was in a show that I loved called Graceland. Yeah. Um, Holly Hunter? No. No, that was, I think, just great. She, no, but uh, here, hang on one second. Let me find it. Um Graceland, he played Agent Mike Warren um, with some other hot people. Um, did you just send more things? Yes, I, you did. Okay. I did. I sent you my, I sent you my Ambry. Okay. This is from, um, oh, fuck yes. Holy shit. Yes. So yes. My, my Embry oh, is God. fucking Alexander Skarsgård. Hello. God, he's so fucking hot god have we all seen his penis yet we haven't okay we should we haven't oh, okay yeah i haven't seen it yet oh you haven't seen it yet it wasn't in uh uh, uh true blood didn't he show his ding, ding dong in that? i don't know I'm but sure maybe i'm gonna need to like watch true you blood you haven't again. seen this the scene where he and the brother fucking get it on no yes okay yes. apparently i need to go back and find true blood yeah so talk about getting your buzzfeed vibrator out um Yep. 
Okay, so I'm gonna I find will. that. I'll find that for you while you're. Yes, talking. please do. Please do. So, Alexander, God, I mean, mom, I really hope you've turned this off. The right fucking Skarsgård family—they grow them real good down they there. They grow them I mean, real good down there. I like Bill. I, I, you know, you don't, but I like Bill. <laughs> and fine. just, be, I mean, he's been in stuff where he's not Pennywise, but it's fine. And I even love—I fucking even love Stalin. I love Stalin because he's adorable as an old man. Because he was good looking when he was younger. I mean. <sighs> God, Alexander. I'm just looking at him like just oh god that's god, he's so pretty. He's just so pretty. Mm. 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 All right. Um okay, so tell me who your embryo is. Okay, let me get back to it. Okay, so this may be a little weird slash creepy, but like maybe not. So just just don't think about the show he's famous for. Okay. Okay. Just look at his his beautiful face. Don't okay. think about the show that he's famous for. Yeah. So my uh, Embry, he's described as um, I think he has like lighter eyes and um, like dark blonde hair. Yeah. Um, I can see which, with like yeah. a reddish tint. Yeah, right. I can see it. And even based on like the um, cover of American Prince, which is the second book in the series, yeah, yeah, um, he has like darker blonde hair that that is curly. Mm-hmm. Like it definitely has some curl to it. If you let it grow out enough, it would get curly. Um, so my Embry, I guess I should probably say who it is, is Matthew Morrison. I can now, see it. Matthew Morrison is famous for his role playing a creepy ass teacher Mr. on Glee. Yeah. So, um, anywho, I, I can see him as Embry. I can also see him not having an issue with playing a role like Embry. Agreed. You know, because I, there are some scar scarred won't either. Right. Exactly. So like, I just feel like there are some actors who would like bristle at playing a role like this, either mm-hmm. Ash or Embry. So I was trying to go with an actor that I felt like just would not fucking care. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, <sighs> I know. Yeah, I, I, I hate to say it, for poor, poor, poor Matthew Morrison. Like he got, they did him dirty. They really did with with Glee because like he got. Screwed. Mr. Shu was really. He started not to be okay. a decent character, and then all of a sudden they made him like a creep. Yeah, he got real creepy. He got real creepy, mm-hmm. and um, and then they made him the Grinch, and that was that of that. Um cool yeah i i like him i always i've always found him attractive um and then he went on to play uh speaking of Grey's anatomy he went on to play um the character joe who was a woman josephine um her estranged husband oh who was abusive as fuck like both physically and psychologically so um, he gets his comeuppance, which is pretty brilliant, actually. But regardless, like he plays a total abusive dick in Grey's Anatomy. Well, he before he started in, in Glee, he was I mean, he'd been on Broadway for many, many years. But there was a couple a couple shows where he was like shirtless and looking good. I mean, I am not surprised by that. No, no, nothing about that surprises me. In I'll fact, take it. I'll take it. Hell yes, I will. Um. I have one more. Oh, you, oh, that's right. You do. Tell me. So this is a laugh. Have, have you seen Gremlins 2? No. You know I haven't. Okay. Well, so this is my Abilene. <laughs> okay, let me see. Yes. Okay. Please, Marla. Yes. <laughs> if anybody who's seen Gremlins 2 knows who Marla is, um, a couple of the podcasts I listened to, one guy in particular was like, I found my sexual awakening <laughs> with Marla from Gremlins 2. And because... She talks, hey, Billy, you talks like this. She's always got a long cigarette. Billy, mm, I'll miss the clamp. Like, it's, she's, that's all I could picture. That's literally all I could picture. I don't know why, but that's, she was, she's a beautiful woman. Like, that's a bad picture of her, but she's a beautiful woman. So, um, but. Uh, well, I mean, I can tell she's beautiful. It's just that, yeah. like, they've intentionally done her up. And also, it's the fucking 80s. 
Yeah, that movie's good. But I mean, she also had to play like, I, I, you know, the the foil to Phoebe Cates, who's one of the most beautiful women in the fucking planet. So there you go. Um, have you read far enough to to get the Gremlins reference in Sleepless in Sicily? Yes. Yeah. I laughed my. I ass thought you'd off. appreciate like, that. Oh my god, my one of my favorite movies. Yeah, um, I knew you'd appreciate that. So, are we going to do some ratings then? Yeah. Do you want to? We yeah. should do that. Let's do it. All right. Uh, do you want to go first to eggplants? Do you want to do eggplants? Yeah. I mean, this was going to be pretty fucking simple. I think for both of us. Yeah. I, I want to say so. fucking five. I mean, yeah. Five. This was like a definite five. This was bef- prior to this the. Um, filthiest book I had ever read was four plan words. Really? Yeah. I was just so excited for you guys. Like, cause I kept thinking, Oh shit. <laughs> Veronica's going to, Veronica's going to see some fucking anal penetration. And I was like, Oh no. <laughs> I oh, mean, no. no, but it is discussed. Like when Emery yeah, I mean, is it's going to happen at some point. Oh, I'm sure it'll happen in book two. Yeah. I mean, like I'm certain of it, but um, I, yeah, I a definite five. I mean, this was like raunchy, like really yeah. raunchy. Yeah, in but a good way, in a you mean, really hot way. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was fucking hot. Even the even the like, um, like the the things that you would normally any of us who were not or who aren't into the culture would be like, yeah, I don't feel comfortable with this. It still was fucking hot. Yes. Yes. I mean, even like, like I said, I'm not into this, but like, this was really fucking hot. Yeah. Really fucking hot. Yeah. All right. Hearts. (sighs) This one's tough for me. I mean, yeah, I'm going to say three. Yeah. I'm going to go with like middle of the road. I mean, yeah, I'm going to have to go with three. Tell me your reasoning for three. So three was, we start off i mean it's it's not like we build to something they're already everyone's in love with fucking everybody like right away and so there's nothing to build to there's nothing to yes i think they're they all do care for each other but it's like it's lust slash love at first sight which Mm -hmm. is fine but it's there's no I, i think that takes a back seat and maybe that's part of my i should have been a con too is like i think part of the sex takes a front seat as to, and and the relationship takes a back seat a little bit. Yeah. I feel like the, I was frustrated and this could have been again, like a con for me, but I was frustrated by the fact that, um, so she meets, you have to suspect, we discussed this a little bit via text, but like you have to suspend disbelief in some, in a few different ways when you read mm-hmm. this book. One of which is that she seriously, she is 16 when she first meets Ash. So like, I get that, that everything feels really intense when you're 16 years old. Like think oh, back yeah. to like the first like real relationship you had, you know, like mm-hmm. maybe you were in high school or college and like, it just, it feels so fucking intense. Everything about that just feels like it's life or death. Like this is, it's either him or it's no one, you know? Yeah. So I can understand why she might feel like an attachment to him. And then I can understand why she might feel an attachment to Embry as well. Like she loses her virginity to him. He acts like he's going to call her the next day. And that gets explained, which I was grateful for because it made no fucking sense to me. That was part of like the flashbacks was that I was like, how is it that they go from this night where they're acting like this with each other and then they just never fucking talk. They don't talk for right. five years. I right. don't understand how you right. got to that point. So I was glad for that explanation, but the romance part of it is like hidden mm-hmm. in, um, like in their minds, you know, like it's not until they finally start really getting together, like until Ash and Greer, begin a relationship that you understand how much Ash cares about her yeah, and has always cared about her. Yeah. And it's not until after that way after that, that you find out how much Emery really cared for her and yeah. still cares for her. Yeah. So it's difficult to like, there's not a lot of, I don't know. I don't want to say like traditional romance aspects to it. 
No, I agree completely. Like there's, and, and maybe part of it is because there's no like I have, wooing. <laughs> well, you and I have never been in this situation either. Um, no. <laughs> so maybe it'd be more like, sexy if like you and I had been in a situation before like this. Where we've got a, you know, where we know. were in a relationship with the president and the vice president, and like two, no, well, let's just say two men, two men, right? Two yeah, men. neither of us have been in that position. No, no, I mean, I'd no. love to be in that position, both in the bedroom and standing up. But <laughs> I mean, I mean, since I'm not, I'm just gonna say one, you go, girl. Uh-huh. Two is like, yeah, I mean. From the outside looking in, it doesn't seem as romantic as, and I I think it's just in general, like it's everything is is put up to eleven in this yeah. book. Yeah, yes, everything is at eleven, and which is fine. It's absolutely fine because you're already like you're talking about sh- like you just said he's the fucking president, so you're already at eleven there. It's not just like a regular guy who's like right. a, a insurance adjuster. He's a fucking president. <laughs> And his, and his, and his, his fucking best friend is the fucking vice president. So it's like also 10 and a half. So yep. you're already at 11 and 10 and a half. So what are you going to do? I mean, yeah. So I, yeah, I think three is a nice middle range. I mean, it's, I, could I see more wooing? Yes. Right. Yeah. Can I see more? I mean, cause okay. I'm going to ru- spoil this one a little bit. They get engaged after six weeks. I know. Yeah. And he's like, I've been in love with you. I'm like, just, just stop because she was 16. Just stop. Yep. Stop. Stop yeah. right there. We're just going to hold it. Yeah. Hold your wad. Yep. 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 But I did appreciate, um, there are some things that she does need to know before she agrees oh, no, to marry no. him. Yeah. And oh, yeah, there's some things that she definitely, definitely needs, to needs to know. Holy fuck me. Yes. Uh-huh. She does know. But he tells her, and he actually, he tells her, like, before they have sex. I thought that was great. Yeah, which I really appreciated. Yeah. To me, that was, like, a demonstration. That was kind of, like, the closest thing to romance that, like, the yeah. most important aspect of, like, any wooing that you would see because is, like, think it's about him it. being, like, I am not going to go to this level of a relationship with you. Like, they do plenty of other shit. But, like, I am not going to go to this level of a relationship with you until you understand all of these other things about me. Well, and he also, like, he, um, he's never really, and I, I hate to say this, but he's never really, yes, he's obsessed with her, but you don't see the love. Right. And I want to say, now, like, I'm taking a step back and thinking about it. I think it's obsession. I mean, because, there's definitely a level of that. Yeah, because like he's obsessed with those letters. He said he fucking mm-hmm. like spanked it in the in the email, like they spanked it in mm-hmm. the in the, the shower to him, and like. Uh-huh. I think he even says that he's obsessed with her. Yeah, I think they're both obsessed. With, I think all three of them are obsessed with everyone. I think if you have to believe that anyone loves anyone, it's Ash and Embry. I think so too. I think so too. Because they know each why, other. But yeah. Right. But they know each other the most. Like, and he has saved Embry's life. Yes, he has. Yep. And there's another reason. <laughs> All right. All right. So that's would ratings. You, do you want you to recommend go- this book? Yeah, I totally would. Yeah. yeah. I would recommend it for a few different reasons. One of which is that I was not expecting it to be so well done for what it is yeah um as you were saying but also like um i w- i appreciated i appreciated how detailed and intricate the storyline is additionally if you want like if you liked the show scandal you will like this book agreed yeah. I mean, I've never seen Scandal. I know, I know of it. I know the storyline for the most part. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. If you want, like, if you want to see the, the show Scandal in a book, this is your one. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. That and um, House of Cards. If you want to see that in House of Cards, yeah. there you go. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, totally uh, agree. Cam- and uh, Camelot. So there you go. Yep. There you go. 
Yeah. Um, do you want to take a brief respite and come back? I'm going to go talk bathroom. about yep. recommend- Yeah. Same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Be Sorry ready. guys. We're going to go to the bathroom. Sorry guys. It's uh, a bio break as my, uh, as my nice, I like it. it. Yeah. Right. That's like a kind way of being like, I have to pee. Yeah. Uh, nature calls. Nature calls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nature cat. God, I have a toddler. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. BRB. Back in two and two, babies. Mm-hmm. And we're back. And we're back. God, I was trying to think of the name of that stupid guy that we talk about all the time. And I can't I don't remember. know. I just think about uh, the count. The count. Yeah. Um, oh, shoot. It was like right there. And it was gone. Lawrence Welk. Lawrence Welk. I was going to say Fred Armisen. <laughs> well, it is Fred Armisen. Right. Yeah. Lawrence Welk. But yeah. Yeah. Classy. Um, all right. So we should talk about some recommendations and then we'll let yeah, these we lovely people go. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, did you put your book recommendation in? I didn't put it in the document, but I okay. have it written down. Um, so my uh, my book recommendation is, uh, and this should really come as no surprise if you have ever listened to this fucking podcast, um, but my book recommendation this week is Beneath the Surface by Emily McIntyre. And I say that because it's the final book in the Sugar Lake series. Um, it's Lily's book. So if you read the first book, you know who Lily is. Um, the first book is Beneath the Stars. Um, I really just, she writes like angsty shit. And so um, it's- Car crash angst. God, it's like emotionally draining. So I'm kind of dragging this one out. Um, but it's just, it's, I mean, it's just as good as the other three, you know? So um, I'm enjoying getting through it. I'm almost done with it, but I had to take a break to read a lot of smut in American Queen. Right. Um, so anyway, comedy. yeah, legit. So anyway, um, Beneath the Surface from Emily McIntyre, she does have a new series starting in the fall, which I'm really excited about. I think so it's Dark is, Romance. So Beneath the Surface is um, the, I think you said this, it was, it's the P.I. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's the P.I. spying on Lily. To try and find her. Chase hired a PI in book one to find Lily. And you find out at the end of book one that the PI found her. But I then, fucking knew it. I know. And I was like, no, I don't think so. Um, well, then book two happens. Um, and there's overlap in the timeline of part of book one and book mm-hmm. two. And then book three happens like just after book one ends which means there's probably also some overlap in book two anyway um book four there's a difference in the timeline Mm -hmm. but there's still some overlap so um it's interesting they both it's complicated it's complicated there's a lot of car crash angst but i'm good yeah i know you it's okay you don't have to read it honey i'm sick I'm, I'm going to go back to my historical romance and just stay do there that, for a little do while. Do that. It's the, the thing about Emily McIntyre is that she's just, she writes a lot of car crash angst, but the thing that I love about it is that, and I this is a personal thing of mine, is being able to see someone go through a lot of shit and then come out on the other side of it mm-hmm. and like, not only choose a happy, healthy lifestyle, but like, but even thrive. realize that that's possible in the first place. Yes. And then learn how to thrive in that. Mm-hmm. So um, it's, it's like, um, how do I want to say this? It's, it's embracing the, the difficult self-work you have to do yeah. in order to like get through that horrible trauma that you have experienced in your life to yeah. move on to the next part, which could be so much better. Yeah. yeah. What about you? What's your book, Greg? So <laughs> as I, I read um, Sir Philip with Love, I think it was. Mm-hmm, I enjoyed, mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that one. Um, but and that's, with, um, what's her, what's the. That's Eloise's book. Eloise's book. Yes. Yeah. So that's the fifth. Yes. Yeah, the fifth, fifth book. 
Yep, in the Bridgerton series. And I really enjoyed it. And I want to punch every person that said, like, that uh, Philip wasn't a good, you know, ram- romantic hero. He's a not normal romantic hero. Like, he's not... He's not strapping, strapping Duke who barely like fits into his fucking like, which by the by, it's England. I hate, I love all our British listeners, but come back. We're talking about 1817 England. Y'all know you aren't having some brawlers up there as Mm -hmm. Dukes. They're they're not busting out of their suits because they're so fucking strapping. No, they all looked like Benedict Cumberbatch, is what we're saying. Which is fine. (laughs) Which is fine. Fine. Um, But I don't know that I'd call him strapping. No, I would say his um, cheekbones could cut cheese, Um, (laughs) which is fine. Um, So Philip is like, and again, this is not my recommendation, which is hysterical, but I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed Philip. He's such a like, he doesn't, he doesn't know what to do. Like he's stuck in this situation where he's like, he's, he's, he has his two children that he has to take care of. And he doesn't, he, he just feels bad because he's not in their lives. And there's a lot of, it, he's, I think he's a sweet person. I think he's a good man. And I think he's a sweet character and I really enjoyed him. And I really enjoyed him and Eloise. Cause I couldn't imagine Eloise with anybody else, but Philip, because Philip was so quiet and Philip a number of times was like, can you stop talking? <laughs> I thought that was fantastic. Like you just talk. You just talk to talk. And I was like, yes, like she needed someone to be like, shut your face. Shut it. I love you, but oh shut God. it. Yeah, it's hysterical. Like they have a really decent, like a really good relationship. Like, um, but again, that's not what I'm recommending. So let me go to what I rec- I'm recommending is bef- I, after I read that, I was like, and I was going to a couple different things and I said, you know what? I'm just going to skim romancing Mr. Bridgerton. And by skim, you mean read the whole fucking thing. <laughs> there it because is. Because I've done that twice this year. Yep. Um, oh, my God. Pen, Pen and Colin. I can't take it. Pollen. I can't fuck Pollen. I can't. T- I think what happened was because Twitter lost yep. their minds. It did. It had like a pollen week. And I, I, did. I texted you and I was like, I don't understand why they're having a pollen week. Like I'm it's, for it. I'm for it. If we do that every fucking year until their season, I'm fine. I'm, I'm not against it by it. any means. I, I just didn't understand why now. That's all. Yeah. I'm, I'm cool with whatever they want to do. Yeah. Um, those two actors and actresses are they're like, so adorable. cute. Oh they're my so God. cute together. Um, did I, did I think about like, did I picture them? Yes. When I reread the book, it's funny because now you're reading and you're like, oh, yeah, I can see that. Like, um, but oh, my God, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton is one of the best. You know, I, I mean, it's definitely on my list. We just have so many things. Oh, I know. I mean, I, I would say because we're never I mean, I would love to say that we're going to be on the air for three more years. I hope but so. If we are, then you already have read it. Um yeah. I but mean, I, would, I, I assume I that's kind of up to us at this point. <laughs> because what I love about this book is it's so natural. Like, they're friends. They've, I mean, you can see the progression of books that Penn and Colin are quote-unquote friends. They're at least more than acquaintances. Mm-hmm. Um, because Penn is always at the Bridgerton house. Right. And then it starts... Because she's friends with Eloise. She is friends with Eloise and they're going to be spinsters together forever, blah, blah, blah. And you start to see that once, because his books, this book starts with um, Colin coming back from, I think, Egypt. He's been traveling and, excuse me, he loves traveling. That's his big thing. And he starts to see Penelope differently. Like he starts to see her as like a, like he, she's a, like, she's a friend. And then she's like, maybe more than a friend. And then the day that he realizes I want to kiss Penelope is like a shot in the dark for him. It's like, it's something turns on him. And as we're talking like 20% in, so it's immediate. Like he's, so we're, these two characters, they, they're in love by the time, like they're in married, they they're in love. There's no, like, you know, that they love each other. So it's trying to deal with their, the relationship for the rest of their, of the book. So, um, cute. so it's very cute. And, um, and he makes her feel so good about herself. Like he makes her like, 
it, it's just it's what all of us who are just a little bit maybe a little heavy a little bit like a little bit like you know off centered it's what we all want we all want yeah. a colin yeah and because colin is such a good-hearted good person so he's not a rake he's not a he's just a good guy yeah <laughs> so romancing mr bridgerton do you have a podcast recommendation for me my dear um i do and it's um god i hope i didn't recommend this last week no i didn't because i did rebel girls um so my podcast recommendation this week is um something called story pirates and it is um let me pull this up it's it's for kids um we're we're taking a road trip soon for our vacation and so i was asking friends of mine with smaller kids like how how have you dealt with like a long car ride with children how do you deal with this because i'm concerned about it and she told me that they really like um this podcast called story pirates and it is a spotify original it is okay so this is the description the story pirates meet a famous film director oh wait sorry that's like the most recent um episode um trying to find like a, just a description of story pirates basically what it is it's a um it's a podcast that is made by adults but they use stories they they act out stories that are written by kids mm -hmm. so like the most recent one uh they meet a film a famous film director who is making a stunt filled underwater action movie featuring two new stories bad art werewolf a doo-wop tune featuring four former stars of broadway's jersey boys about a dad with strong opinions on art written by ruba a 10 year old from new york and bear claw a story about a baker who meets a real life bear inspiration for their the real life bear inspiration for their favorite pastry written by two brothers from the uk milo age nine and theo age seven so then they like act out these stories Aww. and it's cute. Like that's yeah. probably um, this next one's like a half an hour long, you know, yeah. like 35 minutes. So um, if you, if it's the summer and y'all need to take your kids somewhere and you need to keep them fucking occupied, mm -hmm. we, I played it. Um, I did like a test run when I was taking my kid, we went to go visit my grandpa. And when we were driving home, it's like a 40 minute drive. And so I said, like, do you want to listen to this, um, this podcast and see if you like it? And we listened to it and she did enjoy it. So, nice. um, I would recommend it. Like if you're taking them somewhere and they're, you know, being angsty or whatever, and you don't have a DVD player in your fucking car. Cause I don't She's podcast. Yeah. I mean, I, that's why we do podcasts. Cause we don't have any money. Right. Yeah, exactly. Making it rich here, you guys. It's a real labor of love. Um, so anyway, what about you? What's your podcast recommendation? So I don't, I think I've mentioned them before, but I'm going to fucking, I'm pulling this all stops out right now. I'm going to talk about small town murder bitches. So, <laughs> um, so this is two comedians who look at a small town, what it makes it, what makes a tick and a murder that took place there in Perfect. depth research, horrible tragedy and the host comedic spin on the whole thing. So if you, as they say, when you first listen to them, if you don't think that comedy has any place in true crime, then they are not the podcast for you and <laughs> they'll part ways and no one will be, no, there will be no, no hatred That's on so either funny. side. If you don't think that humor plays a role. <laughs> yeah, if you think there's no place for humor in 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 uh, true crime, but as they say, once you get in the car and you go to that liquor store and you and unfortunately, if they shoot that poor woman behind the behind the liquor store desk in the head, you're all in the car together. Whew, you're all you're all, you're all complicit. You're all so, complicit. Um, what they try to do, and I really enjoy this about small town murder, because I've listened to a number, a number of true crime podcasts with comedians. And Shocking. I think, yeah. You and I talked about one of them. And I said, I don't like. So what I like about small town murder is they don't make fun of the victims at all. They're like, well, I would fucking hope not. Well, there are no, there are a number that that do. Well, fuck them. Well, right. And they said, we're assholes, but we're not scumbags. 
Well, yeah. That's I mean, their, Jesus that's their Christ, motto. we're yeah. assholes, but we're not scumbags. scumbags. Um, because it's like, for the most part, it's there are a number. I have. I mean, I'm not lying to you. There are a couple, and there's there's all women ones, too. It's not just all men. There's all women. Come ones on, you guys. Are, like, yeah. I was Do like, better. Guys. Yeah. I'm like, and I think we've talked about this before. And when you mix, quote unquote liquor and a murder i'm like i don't really need that i don't it's because you're already putting it up on a a place where i'm like i don't want that for my loved one yeah if my no, loved one was murdered not. in some horrible way no. i don't want some assholes talking about it over a fucking martini of course not i'm jesus cool. christ i'm cool with it just but what i like about small town murder is what is is what jimmy does so it's um uh, Jimmy Petrog- uh, Petrogallo and it's so it's two Jimmy's so it's James Petrogallo and um oh god I can't think of the J- uh, Jimmy Jimmy I can't think of his name his name is but they're two stand-ups so you got the you know the comedy and James Petrogallo has he does really great research that's what he does anymore it's like uh, it's all he does that and he does another podcast they the both of them they do as uh, is crime and sports which you would love yeah and they're like you don't have to like sports to like crime and sports so but i've listened to a good number of them and they're fantastic like i I'm learned really about lenny like dykstra crime and sports. yeah i learned i mean lenny dykstra is one of the best episodes i've ever listened to and i was like i don't even know anything about him but it's fantastic um but what they do is with small town murderers they they fucking research the, the town they're talking about so like the first part, like the first 30 minutes of the show is like the real estate re- report for the town, the history of the town. Um, like he, Jimmy or James will actually look up like, um, like with the real estate report, he'll tell you like, what's, what's up for sale in the town right now and how much you can buy a house oh for God. in the town. And it's it, what's going on in the town. Um, and then he starts to get into the, it's, it's really funny because, uh, Jimmy's always like, <laughs> they'll be going and talking about some guy, like some character, because James will never tell them like who he will never tell Jimmy who the bad guy is. He'll just be like, <laughs> so and so started this. And he'd be like, Oh, at some point Jimmy will go be like, that's my kind of guy. And James is always like, yeah, you keep saying that. Cause you know what? It's going to come and bite you in the ass at the end. And it usually does. Yeah. He's like, and then someone would be like, and that he's a right. huge pedophile. He's like, but there that's it is. Jimmy's kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's hysterical. It's really funny. Um, and, and, and so they had the same sort of banter with uh, crime and sports, which again, like you don't have to like sports to like it. Um, uh, yeah, so crime and sports, there will be some murders in there, but for most part, it's like a lot of times it's just what's happening with, and it could be somebody who's like a very small, um, small time athlete. To, I mean, I don't think they've done Chris Benoit or anything like that anytime soon. But they, um, they have funny names. Oh, um, their their episodes. Yeah, their episode names: stabbed yes. and left for drunk. The disquietingness yes. of Warren Wells. Yeah, yeah. Smoking and cursing and drinking and murdering. <laughs> a classy, trashy murder mystery. <laughs> yeah. Oh so my God. I agree. I mean, fighting I, the bear. I, I had my mom listen to, like, I had it on when my mom was in the car. And she's like, they say the F word a lot. I'm like, they do say the F word a lot. So it is. You're right, not, Race Mom. Yep. They, they do. They do say but I enjoy it. Is what it is. And they do a lot of live shows. So love it. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping that when they can come to Cleveland, that I can go. Please do, please do. So that's that's it for us. That's it. So um, let's talk about what's coming up. Yeah. So um, things are will be a little tiny bit different um, coming up here. We're still honestly, we're still kind of working some things out. So this episode is airing on August 10th. Um, after this, uh, we're gonna do Penny Reed's new one. Totally folked. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're also probably going to do um, the vacation read with my friends who don't read romance novels. Well, the husband does not read romance novels. Neither is my husband. So um, the upcoming episodes are like a tiny bit up in the air from here. Um, but you can expect some Penny Reed coming up and perhaps... Some blue aliens, avatar porn. 
Um, can I ask a question that I probably should ask offline, but I'm going to ask it now. Sure. Um, do we want to do the last Ravenals? Sure. Blade loss. Yeah. God, who doesn't want to fucking do that? Uh, you should probably do that since it's new. Yeah. That's chasing Cassandra. No, it's after Jason. No, that one's no, the new, new, oh. new one. Oh, okay. Came up this week. Yeah. <gasps> really? Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I, I tried to put the arc in. We never got it. It's fine. Oh, okay. That's fine. I'm We're small potatoes. Out. At some point. I mean, we've got some coming up. We have arcs coming up. So. Yeah, we do. Yep. So exciting. Oh my God. Um, Where yeah. Can, so that's kind of, people that's kinda, can find us. Um, fucking everywhere except for Facebook. <laughs> um, fucking oh well, you know. Okay, guys, we're probably gonna have a Facebook. We're probably gonna have a fucking Facebook. I'm gonna do it at some point this week. So <sighs> look for our Facebook, guys, because life what? sucks and the world sucks. So um, we're gonna have a Facebook. But for now, you can find us at our website, <laughs> ChickletBookClubPodcast.com. Our Twitter is at Chicklet Podcast. Our TikTok is Chicklet Book Club. Our mm-hmm. Pinterest is Chicklet Book Club Podcast. Our email is Chicklet Book Club Podcast at gmail.com. Do you see? Are you sensing a theme? Yeah, right? Our Instagram is Chicklet Book Club Podcast. Our YouTube is our fucking YouTube. I'm not going to fucking read it out. Yeah, no. And um, it's a bitly. It's a bitly. You just click on it, guys. And um, at this point, when this releases, we're like three episodes into Ted Lasso. So fucking Ted Lasso. Go to Apple TV. Watch his mustache. Yep. <laughs> watch his up. mustache. Watch me rot his mustache. Kajatsky. Mm-hmm. Anyhow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jason Sudeikis. Oh, fuck me. He's pretty great. He's pretty great. Mm-hmm. Um, How do we end this fucking thing? super obnoxiously oh my god in the most obnoxious way possible obnoxious way possible are you ready for this i am (laughs) 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 that definitely broke the sound barrier that did that was painful (laughs) i know dogs are barking Where's Bucky Barnes? Oh. oh. Ah! Bucky Barnes! Coming to a house near you tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> we love you guys. We love you so much.